Hello, hello, hello. This is Chris Ferdinandi from GoMakeThings.com. I'm back with another live coding tutorial uh, and following up on our video last week where we looked at how to build your first web component. Today, we're going to build another web component. Uh, this one may be a little bit more functional. We're gonna be building a show hide component where you click a button and some content that was hidden gets displayed and then you click it again and that content gets hidden. Um, Real quick before we dive into that, if this sort of topic is something that you would find interesting, uh, please like this video, comment, subscribe, do all the things that YouTube loves because it helps let me know and uh, shares this video with more people, which is awesome. Um, also, if you enjoy this kind of thing, you might really love my Lean Web Club. Uh, in addition to coaching and a bunch of courses, I also include a collection of coding resources as part of a toolkit. And uh, one of those is a collection of web components, including the one that we're going to be building today. So I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step through how we actually build that. But if you like any of these, you can even bookmark them um, and then they become something that you can very quickly access whenever you need them. Um, I clicked on the wrong one, that's okay. Uh, let's unbookmark that for now. So with that out of the way, let's dive in and uh, actually start building this thing. So I'm gonna jump over to the HTML um, and what we have to start is a button and a div with some content in it. Uh, right now it's just one paragraph, so the div is, I guess, technically optional. But um, you know, I could imagine a world where you have a bunch of stuff in here, not just this one paragraph. Um, so what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to wrap this in a custom element. I'm gonna call it show hide because that is a very descriptive name that uh, is what this component actually does. It shows and hides the content. Um, so we'll do that. And uh, if we reload the page, you'll see that literally nothing has changed because we just, we have our custom element here. So uh, in order to start adding some interactivity here, we need to actually define this as a custom element. And that will let us start adding some interactivity. So in our script here, and I'm just doing this inline for ease. Um, I will make sure that all this source code ends up down in the description below, the doobly-doo, as they say, uh, so you can access it. But um, to get started, I am going to use the custom elements define method. I'm gonna pass in the name of our component, and then I'm also going to pass in a class that extends the HTML element class. And inside this class, I'm going to create a constructor and uh, this is going to instantiate every single instance of this that we have on the page. We'll get um, automatically instantiated with this class and the constructor method will apply to it. So we're going to say instantiate our web component and inside here uh, we need to inherit the parent class properties uh, and we do that by running the super method. Um, so this will pick up the HTML element class properties. Uh, and then let's just double check that this is running by logging something to the console. If we jump over and let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see it, uh, we can see that our web component is now running. So we're doing stuff. Great. Perfect start. Um, so the next piece here is we need to get the different pieces inside our web component. Um, we've got our button, we've got our content. Um, we could just search for those directly, uh, but I actually prefer a slightly different approach. I like to, when I do web components, I like to add some selector attributes that I can use just to make it really, really clear what it is that I'm getting. So for the, the button, the thing that's going to trigger the behavior, I'm actually going to add a trigger attribute to that element. And for the content, which uh, is the stuff that's gonna get hidden or displayed, I'm going to add the content attribute. Uh, and now we have some things that we can search for and hook into a little bit more easily. So let's define properties on our web component. And I'm going to say this trigger equals this query selector and then I can use an attribute selector to look for that trigger. Um, one really nice thing about web components is I can scope my query selector and query selector all methods to the custom element or this. So it makes it really, really easy to find the things you're looking for versus doing some sort of global script. Um, 
where you have to get a lot more specific about how you're selecting things. This just makes it so easy. It's so nice. Um, so we're also going to look for the content. So we'll, um, we will say this query selector and then attribute selector for content. Um, and then finally, if, uh, if there is no trigger and, or there is no content, uh, we're going to bail because if we don't have the elements we need, there's no point in continuing things, but let's also log this trigger and this content just to make sure this is working the way it's supposed to. Uh, and here we can see we get the button, we get the content. Um, one other thing I wanna do, so uh, this button is basically useless without the script, but the content could very well be useful. So what I'm going to do in my HTML, I'm also going to add the hidden attribute to that button. And so it'll be hidden by default. So let's assume the JavaScript never loads. People get the fully visible content, they can interact with it, they can use it. Um, and, uh, and then when the script loads, we will show it. So let's go ahead and add some of that interactivity now. So I can get rid of this. Um, and we will add, um, let's call this set up the UI. Uh, so what I'm going to do is on the trigger, I am going to use the remove attribute method to remove the hidden attribute. And that will make that button visible again. So once the script loads and we can actually do stuff, we can show the button. Um, now the other thing, uh, the, um, uh, the component we're building is what's called a disclosure pattern. And that has some accessibility expectations around it. Um, so if you visit uh, w3.org, uh, the W3C web accessibility um, page. So WAI, ARIA, it, there's a whole long URL. I usually just Google ARIA authoring practices and or DuckDuckGo ARIA authoring practices and that takes me here. Um, and then they have a tab that is just full of patterns. And uh, if we scroll down to the one we are looking for, disclosure, show hide, uh, it tells you what it is. A disclosure is a widget that enables content to either be collapsed or expanded. And then if you click in on that, it actually tells you all of the different things that are expected around this pattern. So one of them is keyboard interactions. So uh, when the disclosure control, that's our button, has focus, entering it or using the space bar should toggle visibility. Um, fortunately, because we are using a button and not trying to hack our own HTML element, that happens automatically. Um, so enter and spacebar interactions on a button automatically trigger a click event. So all we have to do is listen for click and that will just be taken care of for us. Um, but then uh, what I'm also interested in is the roles, states, and properties. This is really where a lot of the rubber hits the road um, for me. So uh, the element that shows and hides the content has a role of button. Because we have actually used a button element, we do not need to add that role. It's already there by default, just as an innate aspect of the button being a button. Um, when the content is visible, the element with the role button has aria expanded set to true. When the area is hidden, it is set to false. So this is, I think, the most important part in here. We're gonna skip this optionally with ARIA controls. Um, ARIA controls tend to work a little bit uh, iffy depending on um, the screen reader browser combination the person is using for, and it's optional. So we're gonna set that aside for now. We're gonna focus on this, ARIA expanded. So on our button, we want, eventually, ARIA expanded, and then this is going to have a value of either true if this content is being shown or false if it's not. Um, so we are going to, rather than expecting the author to hard code that in, we're going to add that as part of our script instantiation. And the reason we do that is because it saves the author from forgetting and then breaking accessibility. Um, and also because those attributes would be useless until the script loads anyways, so we might as well just handle them as part of the script setup. So with that in mind, this trigger set attribute, uh, and then we are gonna say aria expanded, and we're gonna give it a default value of false because we're also going to say this content set attribute hidden. And then um, the set attribute method requires two arguments. So even though I don't need hidden to have a value, I do need to pass in 
a second argument. So I'll just pass in an empty string. Um, and if we reload our page, you can see the button is visible, the content is hidden. And if I shrink this down so you can actually see what's there, the button has an ARIA expanded value of false. Uh, so we are all set up and now we can do the fun stuff. We can add the interactivity. So uh, let's listen for click events. Um, and for this, we are going to listen on our trigger, on our button, add event listener, click. And we're gonna use the same trick I shared in my previous video on your first web component, um, where rather than passing in a function, we pass in the custom element or the instance itself. This allows us to use this awesome built-in method called handle event. And the nice thing about handle event is inside this method, this continues to refer to the instance and lets us access all of these properties and any other methods that we might add onto our web component. Uh, whereas if we used a callback function like you might normally, you have to do all sorts of weird hacks where you um, use the bind method to associate the instance to it. This gets around all that. It's short, it's sweet, it's super easy to work with. Uh, so let's go ahead and say handle click events. The parameter here is an event and it is the event object. Uh, and so then in here, just real quick, we're just gonna log that things are working. We'll jump over the console. So uh, you can see clicked. Now this button has focus. I'm gonna hit the enter key and you can see it's working again. I'm gonna hit the space bar. It's working again. So we have now just taken care of these keyboard interactions just by selecting the right element. Uh, so this is one of those things uh, we don't talk about as developers enough, but element selection matters a lot. Using the right element for the job saves you from writing a ton of code and gives you a ton of stuff for free right out of the box. It's awesome. So uh, now that we have our event set up, let's go ahead and actually do some stuff. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is stop, um, uh, stop, what do I wanna call this? So basically I wanna run event prevent default. Nope, not default, prevent, <laughs> prevent default. There we go. And the reason I wanna do that is let's say this disclosure component happened to be included in like a form or something. The button uh, clicking it would cause the form to submit. And we don't want it to do that because we're just using it to expand or hide content. So stop the button from uh, submitting forms. Uh, was, put that in as a brief description. Um, next, we want to either show the content or hide the content. And one of my favorite ways to do that when you have ARIA that needs to be there anyways, is to hook into the state of that ARIA attribute to control your behavior. So we already have an ARIA expanded attribute that has a value that changes based on whether the content is shown or hidden. So we can say, um, if the content is visible, hide it, otherwise show it. Um, and to do that, we can say, if this trigger get attribute aria expanded equals, and now um, even though we passed in a Boolean, get attribute always returns a string. So we need to use the stringified version of these. So um, if, ARIA expanded has a value of true, the content is visible, otherwise it's not. And so if it's visible, what we're going to do is we're gonna say this trigger set attribute ARIA expanded, we'll set it to false. Um, and then uh, this content set attribute hidden and pass in an empty string. Otherwise we wanna reverse this. So let's go ahead and we'll change this to true. And then we're going to, instead of set attribute, we will remove the hidden attribute. Now, if I jump over to my page again, uh, let's shrink that down a little bit. If I click the button, my content is visible. If I click it again, it hides. I can do that with the keyboard as well, if needed. And we have our interactive component. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's it. So we've got, uh, with comments, we've got about 47 lines of code here. Um, this is kind of heavily commented. So you know, if you minify this, you could shrink it down quite a bit. Um, but 
you can see how easy this is and how nice having a web component makes this. Because now if I wanted to add another one of these, I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to, um, if you've ever worked with like, uh, you know, libraries before, a lot of times you have to do like new, it might be something like new disclosure and then you pass in some sort of like selector, right? Like this, right? And then if you want to do another one, you got to do it again, right? Some other selector, right? You don't have to do any of that with web components. They make it so nice. So I can take this, I can copy it, I can paste it. Uh, you know, we can, we can call this something different, like press me and then, uh, I don't know, let's drop some, let's drop some emoji in here just for fun, right? Pop in a unicorn. So I've got my two, my two distinct pieces of content and, um, and they both work. You can have as many of these on the page as you want. They work independently of each other. Uh, it's just really super easy peasy. So if you like this video, uh, I would love if you comment down below, let me know what you think, like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, the bell icon, you know, all the things that YouTube loves. Um, I'd also, uh, you know, I'd love if you want more of this, uh, head over to gomakethings.com, my website. Every single weekday, I publish a short developer tip on how to reduce complexity of working with a modern web. That goes out to 14,000 developers. Um, I'd love if you were one of them. You can also find links to things like my consulting practice um, and uh, the Lean Web Club, where I have a ton of courses, tutorials, quick references, and where I offer coaching every other week. Um, so hope to see you there, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.